Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna be learning how to call external commands using Python with the subprocess module. So there are many scenarios where you might wanna call an external program using Python. And if you need to, then you can also capture the output of those commands or even pipe the output from one command into another. So that's what we're gonna be learning to do in this video using the subprocess module. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have a blank Python module open here. And first, we're gonna to want to import the subprocess module. So I'll just say import sub process. Okay, so now in order to run an external command, uh, this is extremely simple. We'll look at how to do some more complicated stuff in a bit, but to simply run a command, we can just say subprocess.run and then run the command that we want to run. So I'll do ls. Now, just a heads up, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to be using Linux commands in this video, but you can use the same processes to run uh, Windows commands as well. So ls, the command that I just ran here, it will list the files and folders in the current directory. And again, that's a Linux command on Windows. Uh, you have to use Windows commands. So the ls equivalent on Windows is dir, so d-i-r, oops, sorry, d-i-r. So if I save this and run it, then we can see that uh, the ls command printed out everything in the current directory. Now, if you're on Windows and tried to run the dir command or something similar, then you might have got an error at this point that the system could not find the file specified. So the reason is because the dir command is built into the shell. So we'd have to pass in an argument of shell equals true. So if you're on Windows, then you could say, uh, pass in an extra argument here of shell is equal to true. And if we run that, you could, we can see here that on Mac, we get the same result, but on Windows, uh, that should prevent you from getting that error. And also, if we set the shell argument to true, then we can just pass in an entire command as a string. So if I wanted to add more arguments to my external command, then I could say, so for example, some arguments I could add to ls would be dash la. Um, so if I run this, then now we can see that it runs that ls command with those additional arguments. And those additional arguments just provide more information here. Now, if you are using this shell equals true, then that can be a security hazard if you're using untrusted input. So only use that if you're passing in the arguments yourself. And be sure you're not running it with user input or anything like that. But if you're not using the shell argument, then we actually can't pass in the entire command as a string like we did here. Instead, we need to pass in everything as a list of arguments. So if we wanted to run this same command without the shell argument set to true, then we would have to say, so let me get rid of the shell argument here. So I could just pass this in as a list and I'm gonna to have to do this as a list. Uh, so our first item here is gonna be the command ls. The second item here is the arguments. So now if I run that, then we can see that we get the same thing. Okay, so we can see that all we're doing right now is running this subprocess.run method, and it's printing out the results just like we'd print something in a Python script. Now, the reason is that we're not capturing that standard out. The standard out just goes wherever the standard out of the script normally goes, uh, which is in the console here. So let's try to capture this into a variable instead. Now, you might try to do this just by saying something like p1 is equal to subprocess.run. Uh, but if I run that, uh, then we can see that it's still printing the standard out here to the console. But also, let's see if we get anything within that p1 variable. So if I print out p1 and run that, then we can see that after our ls output here, uh, down here where we printed that p1 variable, that comes out as a completed process object. Now, if you wanna see what all we can do with a completed process object, then you can run help on that. Uh, but let's just go over a few of those really quick. So first, we can check the arguments that were passed into the original command, and we can do that by printing out p1.args. So if I save that and run it, then we can see that we have the arguments that we passed into that original command here. We can also check the return code and the return code will show us whether we got any errors or not. So if I print out p1.returnCode, if I run that, then we can see that we got a return code of zero. And that means that it ran successfully. Now, a way that I like to remember that is to think of that as meaning zero errors. Now, we can also grab the standard out as well. So let's grab that if I print out p1.errors 
STD out and run that. Okay, so when we printed out that standard out, we can see that we got none. And that might be a little surprising to some people. So we got a result of none, but really what we want is the output from the external command that we ran. So the reason that it's printing none is because, like I said before, it's just sending the standard out to the console, all of this stuff here. So we want to capture that instead. So to capture that, we can just pass in another argument here. And we can pass in an argument of capture underscore output is equal to true. And if I spell that correctly, if I save that and run it, and actually first we can see that we did get something here. First, let me comment out the print statement where we're printing the P1 standard out. And if I save that and run it, then you can see that now we're not getting anything in the Python console here. So it's no longer uh, outputting that just by running this subprocess.run command. So now it actually is capturing it in this P1 variable. So now when we actually print out P1.standard out, if I run that, then we can see now it's captured there. Now, one thing to notice here is that the standard out was captured as bytes. So it doesn't look like it did before uh, with all of those new lines. So if we want the new lines to actually be spaced out, then we'll have to convert this to a string. Now, there are a couple of different ways that we could do this. Uh, first, we could just decode those bytes by saying uh, p1.standardout.decode, run the decode method on that. If I run that, then we can see that it looks like it did before. Now, I've never done a video on Unicode and bytes versus strings and encoding and decoding and all of that. Uh, that's a tutorial that I'd like to put together in the near future. But in this case, when we decode those bytes, it's converting it into a string. Now, if we don't want to use decode, then we can just get rid of that and pass in an argument to the run method uh, saying that we want text instead. So I'm going to remove the decode method there. And I'm just going to pass in an additional argument of text equals true. So now, if I run that, we can see that we're not decoding the standard out, uh, but it comes in as a string anyway, so that's good. Okay, so when we set that argument of capture output equal to true, what that's actually doing in the background is setting the standard out and the standard error to the subprocess pipe, and that allows us to capture those values. So let me show you what it would look like to set that standard out argument directly. So instead of saying uh, capture output is equal to true here, instead I'm going to say std out is equal to, and that is subprocess.pipe. And again, that's actually what setting capture output equal to true does in the background, but it also redirects the standard error to that pipe as well. Uh, but just setting the standard out equal to that subprocess pipe, uh, we should be able to run what we have here and get the same results. So if I run this, then we can see we got the same results that we did before. Now we can also redirect the standard out to other places as well. So for example, let's say that we wanted to redirect that to a file instead. Uh, that could be used for logging or anything like that. Now, in order to do that, we could simply just open up a file and redirect it to there. So I can say with open, and I will just open a file here called output.txt, and I want to open that in write mode, and I'll just open that as F. Now, let me indent this so it's within our context manager there. And now for our standard out, instead of redirecting to this subprocess.pipe, instead I'm just going to redirect that to F, our file. Uh, and I'm going to remove our print statement there because we don't need that because we're not capturing that uh, using that subprocess pipe anymore. So now if I run this, it doesn't look like we got anything, but if I uh, open up my sidebar here, we can see that now I have this output.txt if I open that up, then we can see that we got uh, the results from that command in our output.txt file. So that did work. Okay, so I wanted to show how we could redirect that to a file, uh, but now let's go back to what we had before where we're just capturing that output in a variable. So I'm just gonna get rid of all that file stuff, and instead I'm just going to uh, set this back equal to capture underscore output and set this equal to true.
Okay, so now let's take a look at a couple of different things that can happen if our command isn't successful. So let's see what happens when we get an error. So I'm gonna change my command here uh, to instead try to list the contents of a directory that doesn't exist. So I'm just gonna add a, another argument here and I'm just gonna add this to a bonus directory. I'll just say DNE for does not exist. Um, and this argument, uh, that ls command is going to try to list the contents of this that doesn't exist. So if I run this, then we can see that we don't get any output. And that's because we captured it here. Uh, now, one thing that might surprise some people is that we don't get an error within Python. Some people might expect Python to throw an exception if the external command fails, but it doesn't do that. Instead, it just returns a non-zero error code. So again, we can check that just by printing out p1 dot return code and we saw this before so if i run that then before that was zero but now it is one which means we got an error and if we want to see that error then we can print that out as well by saying stderr for standard error if i run that we can see that the error that that command got was ls dne no such file or directory because that directory doesn't exist so within your script, if you only wanted to proceed if that command was successful, then you could put in a conditional if you wanted to. So something like if p1 dot return code is not equal to zero, uh, then that would be your error case or equal equal zero uh, for it not having any errors. Now, if you did want Python to throw an exception if the external command fails, then we can just pass in an argument of check equals to true. So if I add in an additional argument here, I'm gonna say check is equal to true. And now if I run this, then we can see that now Python throws an exception here and we got a trace back and it says that our command uh, returned a non-zero exit status of one. So that might be useful depending on whether or not you actually want Python to throw an exception if your command actually fails or returns a non-zero status code. Um, now, another common thing to do with errors uh, is to just ignore them by redirecting them to something called dev null. And redirecting them to dev null just means that you are ignoring those. So we can do this with the subprocess, uh, similar to how we redirected standard out using the pipe. So we can replace our capture output here and instead, before we did std out, this time I'm gonna do stderr for standard error, and we're gonna redirect that to sub process dot devnull, dev null, and that's all caps. So now if we save that and run it, oops, and I'm actually getting a, uh, a trace back here still because we still have check is equal to true. So I'm just gonna get rid of check. Also, I don't need text either. So I'm just going to delete both of those. Okay, so now we're redirecting that to dev null. If I save that and run it, we can see that it just redirected our error. So we don't have a standard error here. It just says none. Okay, so, so far we've been looking at how to capture output and errors, but we can actually change the input that different commands receive as well. So for example, let's say that we wanted to take the output from one command and have that be the input to another. So let's look at an example of this. So for the first command, I'm just gonna run a cat on a file, which is a Linux command that will just print the contents of a file if it just has one file as the input. And for the second command, I'm gonna use the output of that first command to grep that file. And grep can be used to search the file for certain contents. And again, these are Linux commands since I'm on a Mac, uh, but you should be able to do something similar uh, to this using different Windows commands as well. Okay, so first, I'm gonna run the cat command on a file uh, that I have in the same directory here called test.txt. And I actually have test.txt open here in Sublime. So let's take a quick look at this. So we can see that this is just a very simple file with seven lines that says this is a test with seven lines, okay? So in order to run the cat command on that file, I'm going to change this up a bit. So instead of ls, I'm gonna run cat and I want to run cat on uh, that test.txt file in the same directory. I don't have any more arguments after that. And I don't want to redirect standard error to dev null. Instead, I'm just going to set capture output equal to true so that we can get that output and any errors. Okay, so to see if that worked, then I'm just going to print out our standard out 
So if I save that and run it, then we can see that we got the contents of that file. It's in bytes right now, so I forgot to add text is equal to true to make that a string. So I'll save that and run it. And now we can see that we got the same contents of that file. Okay, so now in order to use that output as the input of the grep command, I'm gonna copy what we have here uh, previously and I'm just going to change this a little bit. So let me paste this and now I'm gonna change this to be P2 as our variable. And now I want to run grep and I am going to do a couple of uh, different arguments here. So I'm gonna also pass in an argument of dash n, which gives us the line number that it finds a match, uh, just so we can test this. And let's look back at our test.txt. I will search for the text of test, and that's on line four. So I will pass in test uh, for the word that we are searching for. Okay, so I'm also gonna keep capture output equal to true and text equal to true but I'm also going to add one last argument here, and I'm gonna say input is equal to, and I want this input to be equal to p1 dot standard out. So if I save that, uh, I'm going to comment out the print statement on the p1 standard out there. So we're just passing that in as the input for that grep command. And if I print out p2 dot standard out and run this, then we can see that grep says that it found a test on line four of that output from the first command. Now that's a bit of a contrived example because you can just grep files directly, uh, but it might be useful if you want to capture the output of this command first and do some type of processing on it and then pass that into the grep command. So it's definitely useful to know how to do this at times because it's nice being able to grab that output from step to step. But if you're not doing anything with the output between the steps, uh, then you can definitely just use that shell argument that we saw earlier and just write out the whole command using pipes in Linux if you're comfortable doing that instead. So what I mean by that is that you could, you know, instead of doing this whole process here, uh, we could just say uh, shell is equal to true. And then instead of passing this in as a list of arguments, we could just say cat test. Oops, I got to get rid of uh, that square bracket as well. We could just pass all of this in as a string and then do a grep dash in test. And if I print out the standard out of that, then we can see that we got the same result. But like I was saying, it's definitely useful to know how to pass in the input to different external commands uh, because, you know, if you are doing step-by-step -step processing and doing some string parsing or something like that using Python, then you can pass in those results into a different command. So that's definitely useful. Okay, so I think that's gonna do it for this video. I hope that you found it useful learning how you can call external commands using Python and also how to uh, redirect those outputs and inputs and things like that. It's definitely useful, especially when I'm writing scripts on a web server or something like that. It makes it possible to run some background commands within the Python script itself and process at that output further if need be. But if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.